I am utterly daunted. And, uh, and the education space is, is an unusual one and pretty different from healthcare in a, in a lot of ways. Healthcare has been uh, in the process of disruption and embracing technology for the past several decades. Whereas education looks kind of like it did, you know, a while ago. <laughs> uh, so I have started a, a, a couple education companies, two of which are public, and, uh, and I'm on to my third. And it is an exciting time in education. We've moved very slowly, but it's starting, uh, the pace of change is starting to accelerate. And I think the hallmarks of the changes that uh, the technology and, and that a changing economy are, are driving are pretty important. It has to do with much more flexible physical spaces. Uh, that's the, uh, the D school at Stanford. It has to do with online learning. And you'll hear from everybody in ed tech, it's all about anywhere and any time learning and just in time learning. It has to do with immersion. Uh, and I think you're just starting to see the front edge of things like Oculus uh, uh, affect uh, what we can teach and how uh, we can teach it. And, and it has to do with a breakdown and, and a war going on right now in the education space. And so um, I'm departing from these guys a little bit because the ed tech space and the opportunities here run into some of the most uh, uh, slow moving and, uh, and difficult to change uh, areas in uh, the economy. Um, the war that is actually uh, being uh, uh, fought right now that we are all parts of in one way or another is between people who believe in a top down, one size fits all education system. This is a standard, we're all going to teach it. We are now decided that every kid should learn how to program, and so every kid's going to learn how to program, as opposed to uh, all of the experience of anybody here who has two kids or a sibling, uh, the obvious answer that everybody learns differently, is interested in different things at different times. Is a banana good for you? It depends, right? If you're, if you're, if you're diabetic, it might not be good for you. How many bananas, right, and when? The, the notion of a marketplace in education, the other side, the notion of choice at every point in your life is actually where the ed tech revolution is sort of, is sort of starting to get engaged. And the question, it's so obviously true that there should be lots of choices, that one size doesn't fit all, and the question is why that's so hard to, uh, uh, to implement. And the answer is that, that uh, businesses aren't always uh, good people, uh, 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 well-meaning. Uh, that happens uh, in, in more recent cases as well uh, with the rates. And it happens in education, that, uh, that people are skeptical of markets, they're skeptical that parents will make bad decisions, that educators will make bad decisions. And we feel that we have to tell everybody how to teach their kid, uh, because otherwise they're going to foul it up. The, uh, the hallmarks of a system done right, the hallmarks of the policy part of education change have to do with real metrics, metrics that people believe in. I could talk about test scores, uh, uh, and this set of schools has slightly higher test scores than that set of schools. Or I can talk in the case of KIPP about, and this is a middle school in the US. There are about 140 of them at this point. This is. This is, uh, uh, again, middle school judging itself, it turns out, by how many of its kids end up graduating college. And the schools that, uh, uh, that it compares itself to are urban schools, largely in the US. Um, under 10% of kids will end up graduating college. And KIPP schools, it's 40%. They're not a little better in test scores. If you send your kid to this school, he has a four times better chance that's where things start mattering. Um, to make ed tech work, it's all about what are we measuring. You could think of the world civil code and criminal code. Right, we, in the, in the civil code, it's all about contracts between people uh, and, and trying to create a structure where we can all work together. In, this, in the criminal code, the society has an interest. It says this behavior is unacceptable, not because you hurt that guy. He's not the one going after you. You've hurt society, and we're going after you. The question is, do we see education as a top-down, everything thought of as a criminal code, where we decide what's good and bad, 
or do we see it as creating a structure uh, where people decide? Standards are, could be uh, just facilitating. In the case of, of, of bolts and screws, it's about, it's about thread so that, so that different things work together well. In the case of education standards that are evolving, it's about your diagnosis of my kid's problem with your prescription for it. Um, that everything ties so we can figure out what you're doing wrong and we can fix it. Um, as opposed to standards where we say, thank you. As opposed to standards where we say, this school is unacceptable, this teacher is unacceptable, we have to close it down and we have to fire them. It turns out that the appetite for top-down kind of policies in the UK, in the US, and everywhere else is pretty light, whereas the appetite for change based on marketplaces is pretty severe. If your team is terrible, people stop going to the game. Nokia and Blackberry were fine companies. They never did anything wrong. They just didn't innovate fast enough and they left uh, within, within a very short time. Marketplaces are brutal in terms of accountability and I think it presents some opportunities. I skip this. As we know what the metrics are, as we agree on things that are important, if I send my kid here, this kind of outcome is going to happen because he's this kind of kid. Um, parents start paying attention, educators start paying attention. So what are the changes right now? What are the opportunities in the ed tech space and in the education space? The first one is the notion of a lecture, the notion of school traditionally. There's a textbook. On top of that, some guy gets up and gives a lecture. And then on top of that, there's discussion. And everybody knows about the flipped model where we get rid of the lecture and we replace it with asynchronous materials. You come to class having seen the video, having seen those materials. What's happening now, though, is that those asynchronous materials look a lot less like an hour-long lecture that you have to watch on your, on your cell phone and more like a series of small modules that are interactive, collaborative, and compelling. And the textbook companies not wanting to be left behind are starting to take their materials and make them modular and interactive and adaptive and collaborative to the point where there's just asynchronous stuff that you're doing sometimes, and then you come together to discuss. And you might be coming together to discuss them in a physical place, or you might be doing it online. Um, the costs involved to think about it, I can commission a book for $50,000 and find a fine author. The average video game costs $25 million. The average movie costs $100 million now coming out of Hollywood. These modules are starting to get expensive. Some of them, like YouTube, are being done by everybody and crowdsourced, but the really good ones are being done by people who say, I'm going to develop the best way of teaching the heart uh, and how it pumps, and just every professor will incorporate that module into his program. And that's starting to bubble around. But there's a lot of work and a lot of uh, companies to be created to make that all happen. In terms of just-in-time learning, uh, General Assembly is a well-known uh, company in the US. Uh, I think it's now here. Um, basically, teaching people, instead of getting a master's, take a three to six month program costing eight to $12,000. And you can move into a $75,000 starting position as a computer coder. Um, that's terrific. I see a dozen companies that are popping along as the General Assembly for Liberal Arts, the General Assembly for Health Sciences. People starting to say, I can create a great community. I can create short programs. I think the master's and graduate school education that is uh, professional graduate school education is dissolving um, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the face of a, a much more of a just-in-time approach. In the US, the Department of Labor says uh, millennials will have 25 jobs in five different careers during their lifetime. You can't stop and get a master's every time. Just-in-time learning is a, a perfectly logical solution uh, uh, to this. The last thing I just want to mention is the education space, as I say, is changing, is cracking, in large part because the cost of education has continued to rise and people are pushing up against that. I think the driver is cost more than tech. But tech is a solution. The thing is, it's a very slow moving space. It's, it's resisted change for several thousand years, and it'll resist change for another couple. Um, the, the big advice for somebody moving into ed tech is to be patient. Uh, 
it's, uh, it's a long slog, but it's happening. Thank you.